Yo, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC from scratch. So let's get started. So as we've recently learned, uh, buying a pre-built computer isn't always the best option out there. Uh, you may have heard of everything with Artesian builds who were scamming people. Uh, so I've actually had creator uh, streamer friends who have wanted to build their own PC, but they've always said that they didn't know where to start. So that is here. What we're going to do today is we are going to go over uh, everything from some safety precautions to picking out your parts to installing those parts and uh, setting up your BIOS and even installing Windows. We can go through all of that. It'll be quick and easy. And um, shout out to Asus, uh, ROG as well, and NVIDIA, whose parts I've both been using in my PCs, my last three builds for over 10 years, and I've never had any issues, uh, nothing but top quality to them. So if you aren't sure where to start and you're looking for a good quality brand, good quality brand, that is where I would recommend you start because uh, like I said, I've never had any issues and they are top quality. So uh, I'd also like to say if you have any questions or run into any issues with this, feel free to post in the comments below and I will try to get to it and help you out. If you're not sure what's going on or you're running into issues, I will do the best to give you my knowledge. Or you can also join the Discord that I'll post a link for below where we could have some one-on-one -on -one chats if you're having issues, we can work through them together. Uh, let me know if this video worked for you or if there's anything missing or that you noticed and I'll uh, see what I can do to get it added in the comments or put, added to the description. But good luck on your PC build and here we go. So the first thing we're going to go over is picking out your parts. You want to make sure everything's going to work together because you can buy parts that are incompatible with each other and then you're either stuck waiting for new parts to come or trying to sell these ones and that's not fun for anyone. So we'll go over some of the details when picking out what you want so that everything works nice together. And I'll leave uh, all of these specs in the description so you can check out what I'm using if you'd like. And personally, when I'm buying parts for a new computer, I like to start with the motherboard and go from there. I've been using Asus for quite a while now and never had any issues with them. So I typically go to their website, check out what they've got right now, find one that suits my needs and go from there. Once you have your motherboard picked, you're also going to want to make sure that the form factor of it matches your case. So I have an ATX motherboard, so I made sure I grabbed an ATX case to put it in because then it will fit. Along with your motherboard, uh, on the website actually for your motherboard, there should be a qualified vendor list, which typically has the processors and RAM that are compatible with your device and will work for sure. That will be a good friend of yours during this whole process. So with this, motherboard that I bought, I made sure that my processor fits the slot. They're both AM4, so once those are fitted, you're good to go. Uh, RAM, you're also going to want to make sure some might not fit in your motherboard, but like I said, in that qualified vendor list, you can find which RAM typically or has been proven to work with your motherboard. So once you check there, you're golden. Uh, sometimes not all might be in there because other RAM might have come out after you've or after the motherboard's been tested with older models, but they do update it every so often. So I would just double check. There's also a, a website called PC Part Picker, which you can use to make sure that your specific parts are compatible with each other. Now for your hard drive. All new motherboards should have SATA ports, which is what hard drives have been using for years and years now. But new hard drives do come in the form of an M2 drive. And if that's the case that you're going to go with one of those, you want to make sure your motherboard has an M2 slot that fits that specific hard drive. And now we want a video card, which the video card should fit the motherboard pretty good regardless. 
you just want to make sure that you get one that's capable of handling everything you're going to use it for, whether it's gaming or music production, video editing, etc. Just look at the website, see if it fits your needs. They'll say what it's good to use for on there as well, so you sh shouldn't have too much trouble with that. Video cards are pretty universal, as long as the slot that it is is on your motherboard as well. Like if you have a PCIe video card, you want to make sure your motherboard has a PCIe slot. And your power supply, what you're going to want to do is certain video cards, well all video cards take a certain amount of power requirement, so you check out how much power your video card requires and maybe some of your other components. And with a power supply, I would say it's not a bad idea to overshoot a little bit uh, instead of under. A little bit of extra power never hurt anyone. And then you're, you know for sure that everything in your device is getting sufficient power and that should cause less issues. You're also going to want some kind of cooling unit for your processor, which they typically come with a standard heatsink. But as I'm doing this as a gaming machine, I personally enjoy liquid cooling. I haven't had any issues with it in my previous two devices. But one thing I want to mention with this is you want to make sure that the cooling you have fits the case you're going to get. So that Master Liquid ML360R would not fit very well in a mid-size tower. It actually doesn't even fit the previous tower I had so that I was going to reuse. So I went ahead and got a new one because I checked this tower and confirmed that it would fit on PC Part Picker like I mentioned. So it's always good to do your research ahead of time and make sure you have everything you're going to need. One thing I left out on this computer is I don't have an optical drive and that is being due to the fact that those cooler, the fans on it, are going to take up the entire front of this device so I won't have room for an optical drive. But that's okay. If yours doesn't have room, you can actually buy CD drives that just connect via USB. So you plug it into a USB slot and then you can use it as your CD drive. So now that we've went over all the parts and what you need to watch out for to make sure that everything is cohesive together, let's go ahead and start putting these pieces in our motherboard before we put it in the case. It's also a good idea to have one of these. Uh, it's an anti-static wristband. So you basically plug this on the middle and wear it so that you don't discharge and wreck any of your electronics. Okay, so by on the metal, I meant you put this, attach it to your case, and then you wear it, and you should be good. But uh, you're going to notice that I'm not wearing it in this video a lot, because I did uh, ground myself to my case every time, so I would touch my case to discharge any static I had. And it's also a good idea to please keep your components on the anti-static wraps that they come in until you're ready to use them. First thing we're going to start with here is the RAM. One thing you need to notice is those small timing numbers right there, the 16, 18, 18, 36, because we're going to have to set that in the BIOS to make sure everything is correct and working together. You also want to look at your motherboard manual to see what the best configuration would be. And for this example, because I'm doing dual channel, I want to use sockets B2 and A2. All right, so the RAM should fit in there one way. You want to just start, make sure all these are open, and you just want to push it straight down, and it should click just like that. Grab the second one. Push it till it clicks, and the RAM is done. So for your hard drive, if you're using an M2 slot, you're gonna have to do a little digging most likely. For this motherboard, I had to pull a screw out of here and here. We remove this plate. I had to pull out a screw there and here for this heat sink. And right there is where you'll find the slot for it. So this one's gonna go in at kind of an angle. Like, there we go, wiggle it in there. And for this, I have a heat sink here, so I'm just gonna pull off the protective layer in between before I put this back down. Come on, layer. Just like that. And now, 
I'm gonna push, and it's gonna spring back up until you push it down and screw it in. We'll make sure that lines up with the hole there. And then we can put this back on. We'll screw this back in quick. this one back in quick make sure this one's tight and then we can put this piece back onto here Oh, that's why I put the wrong screw in here. So make sure, this is why it's a good idea to make sure you're keeping your screws separate so you know you're putting the right ones back in. So this guy goes right here. And that feels better. So now we can put these screws back in. And just like that, the hard drive is done. Next, we're gonna do the processor and it has a bunch of tiny little pins as you can see but it can only fit in one way if you notice there's a gold arrow up here what that does is lines up with the arrow that is on the motherboard right there so if I match those two arrows up it should perfectly fit in just like that and then once it's in you want to go ahead it's going to be tight but you want to push this bar down and lock it in so for this case it came with two stock fans on the front as well as a tray to hold the disk drive but because my cooler is going to be three fans tall i had to remove the two stock fans and the tray so that we can put these in which we're going to do next so i'm not going to show you how to put the cooler on there as depending on which one you get it's going to be quite different and per case and there's plenty of videos out there for installing those specific coolers and cases, but this is what mine looks like now that it's mounted on there on the front. The three fans there and the water block on the back. And then once we put the motherboard in, we'll be able to hook that onto the processor for cooling. Now we're gonna do the power supply, which you can see there's a hole for right there. And they actually go in pretty easy. You just grab it, put it, in where it goes and then back here you just slide it up until the screw holes match which right there 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 should be four of them once those line up you can go ahead and screw that in so i've got the power supply in place now and I've pulled the power cables that I'm going to need through here. You're going to make sure you have all the ones you need. For example, these ones, VGA, those will be the ones for the video card. You want to make sure you've got your motherboard power. Make sure you've got your CPU power. And make sure you've got SATA power if you have a SATA hard drive. And so I also have this second hard drive that I use for media, for example. Now, most SATA hard drives would be generally placed right here on this side, but this case actually has a spot specifically for it right there. So I'm going to mount that there quick and that's where it will sit. 
Now we're gonna do the motherboard, which you have these back ports here, which should line up with the back of your case. And then there's about nine screw holes on here that will line up with the screw holes underneath here on the case. So we put that in, slide it into place, make sure all the screw holes line up, make sure the back plate lines up, and then you can go ahead and screw that in. Now we're gonna mount the cooling onto the processor. So the first thing we wanna do is peel this off. Get that off of there. And then we're gonna spread some of our thermal paste on the processor. Kind of gob it down on there. And use a card to kind of spread it around. And you wanna make sure you cover the whole thing, get it everywhere to dissipate the heat properly. So yeah, we'll just make sure that we have a good amount of that on there. And once we've got this spread on here enough, we can go ahead and put the cooler on here. I'm just gonna use a little bit more. Get around the edges here. Make sure we got that spread on there nice and equal. And once you've got a layer of the paste on there, we can go ahead and mount this on here, just like this. And the clips just go right on the side here. And there, now that the, that's on there, we can tighten that up and that should be good to go. Next, we're gonna go with our video card. And you can install that in your first PCIe slot closest to the processor. And you make sure you've pulled out two back plates for this one to fit. And you just fit it nicely into the slot right there. It should push down and feel pretty snug. And once, once that's in place, you can go ahead and put the screws in there to hold it in place. So when you're connecting your power supply to your motherboard you want to make sure that everything is fully connected your video card's going to want to have cables you're going to need to if your case has any usb 2 or usb 3 spots those are usually down underneath where the video card goes your reset switch is down there and you can find out which pins are which on the book in your motherboard again very helpful so you just line those up with that and then the case buttons should work properly You've got spots for your chassis fans. You want to make sure that your CPU is getting proper power. You want to make sure you've got your motherboard power plugged in. Any SATA devices you have also need to be connected to the motherboard SATA ports as well as power supply. All right, so I've got everything hooked up now. I finished my CPU cooler, but I'm not gonna go over that in this video because each one is set up differently and you, there's a good chance you won't have the same one I do, but I will put a link in the description to the video that I used so you can see what kind of setup I have in here. And now I think we can put the case side on, fire it up and get into setting up our BIOS. When you boot your PC, you will see at the bottom something like press, delete, or F2 to enter your BIOS, and that's what you will hit to get in there. So once you're in your BIOS, you just want to play around, make sure that all your timings are right, your voltages are right. As you can see, the 12, 5, and 3 volt are all within the range. It's got, my it's got the proper memory frequency and capacity, so I'm leaving all the timing for my RAM and my CPU set to auto. I'm not doing any overclocking this build. You can see the temperature looks good. It's picking up the proper CPU frequency. 
So from this point on, once everything in your BIOS looks good, I will go ahead and install Windows. You also want to go to the boot tab here and make sure you can see your hard drive or your uh, CD drive, whatever you're using to install Windows from and whatever you're installing Windows on. You want to make sure those are both in there. All right, so I was going to show you installing Windows, but I ran into a couple issues. Uh, so what I was going to do was install Windows 7 and use my old key and then do the free upgrade to Windows 10. But my parts were too new that, that I couldn't, uh, they couldn't handle the Windows 7 install. But what I learned during this is when you are installing Windows 10, you can use your Windows 7 key and just enter that directly in as your license key. So to save some money, don't buy a new copy of Windows 10 with your new computer, buy an old one like Windows 7 Professional even, and then use that code in Windows 10 and it'll give you the free upgrade to Windows 10 Professional without having to pay the price for a brand new copy of Windows 10. Another thing that I wanted to mention is uh, I had a, my media drive plugged in and it was causing grief while I was installing Windows. So make sure you just unplug any extra dr drives that you have when you're installing Windows, only have the one you're trying to install Windows on. And then once the install is done, you can go ahead and plug your other drives in there and that'll save you some grief as well. Other than that, I will leave, um, I'll leave a link to a video of installing Windows down in the description because mine uh, are all out of order and with the issues that I had are kind of wacky. So I'll leave a good one down there that is easy and you will be able to uh, follow no problem. And that brings us to the end of our video. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions or need any help with this, feel free to leave some comments down below or join the Discord, and I will gladly walk through any of this with you, time permitting. Like I said, we'll go through whatever issues you're having. We can go through if you're getting any errors. If you want me to review your pieces before you go ahead and buy them, let me see what you've picked out, and I can give you the okay, what might work and what might not, or things you want to go over. And we're here to help, help you save some money on not buying a pre-built custom computer and not having someone else uh, do the labor work for you and not buying an expensive copy of Windows. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave them below and good luck on your new build.